Okay. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday, and um, thank you for joining, and thank you for your patience. I truly appreciate it. Um, we're going to go ahead today, and we're going to be talking about uh, using mass change and creating mass change definitions. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the first thing I want to do is show you how to get set up for mass change. So under the system uh, option, under modules, there's a mass change, this get mass change option. Currently, I have it set up. So since I have it set up, you can see that there's a minus sign here. Normally, if it's not set up, if you don't have mass change set up to be used, there's a plus sign. So anytime you want to use one of the modules, you have to go in and make sure that you click on the plus sign in order to activate that module to start working. So now I went in and I have that module working. I can go into any of my different options, like employee, position, compensation, payroll items. Any of those options are going to have a mass change button, a mass change button to use. And you can see it, it's right here. So anytime we're going to be making a mass change to any screen, we want to be really careful when we're doing it. Now, you as the ITCs are going to want to kind of like be err on the side of caution and be careful who has access to that mass change feature at the district level just because of the fact that this is very powerful and we consider it to be similar to data tree where they can go in and make a bunch of mass changes to something and maybe they didn't want to and they could make, make you know, a mess for you at the ITC to clean up. So again, you're going to want to, you know, you know your users and you know, you know who would be able to handle using this, this feature. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is any time you're going to be making a mass change definition, you want to filter the data that you're wanting to change first. Because if you don't, like currently, I have all employees pulled up, okay? With that being said, if I went in and started to use a mass change definition, everybody that I'm seeing is going to get changed. So I need to filter the data that I want to change first before I do anything. So um, what I would do is I would go in and filter. So like I, I currently have the employee record pulled up. So maybe I want to pull up any, anyone that has greater than two years of, of authorized experience. We'll just do that for the grid filter. So it's going to give me everybody that has two years or more of experience. So again, you want to filter your data out to just include the people that you want to make changes to. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is making a change like to the position record because um, in our newsletter we had just talked Make, making the changes that are, are getting ready for like EMIS reporting. And so one of the things, one of the features that we talked about was making a change to remove all the EMIS contract field information. So we can do that by going to core and then we can go to the position record because that EMIS contract information is located in that position record. So again, what I could do is I could filter and find anyone that has contract amount information or contract work days in the EMIS field. Um, I'm just going to go ahead because in reality, if you think about it, we're going to be blanking out. We're going to be zeroing out all of those fields. We're going to be getting rid of them. So with, in this instance, I probably really don't need to worry too much about my filter because all of those fields I want blank at this point because I do not want that data getting pulled in from the data collector because if it does, if there's data in those fields, it's going to be used from the data collector because that look, it's looked at first. If there's nothing in there, then it looks at the position and compensation records. So what I can do, again, I don't really need to worry too much about my filter for this particular change that I'm going to be making. So I could just leave everybody in there, or maybe I just wanted to pull any active employees. So I could just go ahead and filter on all active employees. 
So now I've got all of my active employees pulled up in my grid. I'm going to go to this mass change feature. And then to, to create a definition, I would go in under where it says choose mode. It always defaults to maintenance mode. I could actually go in and create a, a, a mass change definition. So um, I'm kind of going to go back a step, and I'm going to create a mass change definition. Let's just say I want to change the, the description, the, the position description for all of the aids. I'm going to go ahead and, again, I'm going to filter my grid to only pull in anyone that has the position description of aid. I'm going to change that position description name to um, teacher aid. So now I've got only the people I want to make changes to. I'm going to go back to my mass change button. I'm going to use the maintenance mode option. Here is where I can actually go in and create a mass change definition. So I know that my, my property is position description. So I could go down here and just start typing, like start with a PO, and it pulls up all, all occurrences of that. Or if I wanted to, I could use the drop down and start searching for that position description. Either way, you, you can find it. However, oops, I guess I got to type the right word. So I can see here is my position description. Okay, so I've got that property pulled up. And then the new value that I want to put in there is called teacher aid. All right, I've made my mass change definition. All right, I've got that set up. I want to save this because maybe, you know, I might want to use this again for something. Granted, it might not be for the teacher making it a teacher aid. It might be some other position description. So I'm going to go in and give this a definition name. I'm going to call it um, position description name. Once I do that, I need to click the save option. And then I can save that definition in here to this low definition field. If I don't save it, it'll be gone. It's not going to it's not going to be in this low definition field. All right? So now you can see it put it put it in this low definition field and I should be able to go in now since that position description name is in there. I can go in and and execute this and change that position description name. So I can just click on the execution mode option. And it's telling me there are 11 position objects that will be modified. So again, those are my 11 records that I had filtered in my grid. Once I've got that pulled up, all I have to do is click on the Submit Mass Change option. Oh, and of course, I got an error. <laughs> um, so either I, I, I have to go in and pull up the error and figure out what, it, what I did wrong. Hold on here. Minimize that so I can exit out of this. All right, so I'm wondering if possibly I need to have quotes around this teacher aid. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things like with the mass change definitions that, that are quirky. Like some things have to have quotes around it. Some things have to have like a string in front of it. So that's one thing that is kind of a, that you don't realize that you have to make changes to. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll see if that, if that'll work. Oops. Uh, I didn't do that because now I'm going to fill for 81 records instead of 11. Let's do that. I got to go back in and put the A back in there. All right. Go back to mass change. My position description name is still there. Okay, so I submitted the change. It told me that 11 objects were changed. Now, you can see that I had to put the quotes around it in order to get it to work. So now, I should be able to pull it up by teacher aid, and they should all be there as teacher aid. There should be some records for teacher aid. There they are. So that's how I made, I created a mass change definition. Now, if I created that mass change definition and Heidi duh, at Meta said, oh, I really like that definition. That's awesome. Let's, can you send it to me so I can use it? We can do that. You could create a definition and if someone likes it, you could 
send it to, the, to them, the JSON file to them, and then they can import that definition to the property that they want to change. So I'm going to go back in to mass change. I got to go back to maintenance mode because that pulls up all of my definition name information. So in order for me to import a definition, I would go down here where it says import definition. And then I would find, you know, the, where I save that definition. Let me go, oops, oops. Get out of there, all right, get down here. Let me go here. And so I would find like where I, where I save that definition. And then what I would do is I could just go in and let me just find a good one here. I could actually, yeah, I already imported that one, so that's not a good example. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find something uh, that I can load into the position. I can do that. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna EMIS, EMI, reportable to EMIS falls. I'm gonna load that in. So I would go in, import definition, find the definition, then I click save and save that definition. Then I can go over here and see that that definition has been saved. So then I could go in and I can actually use that definition when I want to. So you can create definitions, you can import definite definitions. I could also download, like I said, if I created a cool definition that someone really liked, I could go in here and download that definition and save it wherever I want to save it to and then I have the capability of going in and just emailing that definition to whoever asked me for that definition. So there's a lot of nice features with that mass change option. So that's how you can create mass change definitions. And again, that feature is available in a lot of different screens like employee position, payroll item, compensation, uh, not, yeah, compensation, several different screens. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you one of the definitions that I have, and this is the one like I had talked about, Michelle sent the newsletter out about the MIS changes. We have some definitions that you can actually go in and use. There are some that are already hard-coded out there that can be used, but again, I have some that I'm going to actually show you that you could go out and create or want, I could send them to you, it doesn't matter. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about, I'm going to go ahead and close this right now. Um, we're still in positions, is again, changing the EMIS contract fields. We just talked about that a little bit ago. So I'm going to go ahead and just filter the grid and just pull everybody in because anybody that has EMIS contract information, I want to make sure that it gets cleared out. So I'm going to go to the mass change definition and then I can go to the load definition option. And I can see I already imported a clear EMIS contract fields definition. There's already one out there. Actually, the SSDT, this is the one the SSDT created. So in reality, you should already be able to see that. So if I go ahead and, and define that I want to load that definition, I could go in and use the execution mode and once I do that, you can see down here the script definition, how it's set up. It's going to basically change the hours in the day to zero, the contract amount to zero, the contract workday to zero, and the full-time equivalent to zero. Now, if you didn't want that, you could always go in and create your own. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do a submit mass change. And when I do that, all of the information in those fields should get blanked out. It should be blanked out to zero. Now, since there's so many records, there's 419 records, it took a little longer. But you can see now, it took all of those that had data in there and it zeroed it out. So now all of that data is cleared out for MIS reporting. So that's one of the options that we have available out there to use. And it's one of the things that we talked about in the newsletter. Um, another thing that we talked about was the compensation record because 
Unfortunately, we have no way of like unflagging that report to EMIS flag on the compensation record for the prior fiscal year. So all of the old compensation records that are sitting out there from last fiscal year, from fiscal year 19, the EMIS reportable flag is still going to be checked. So what happens is when the data collector starts pulling data in, it pulls in both jobs. It pulls in their new compensation, which is for 2020, as well as the one from 2019. So in order to change that, we can use a mass change definition to unflag that uh, fiscal year 19 compensation record. So if I went out to the compensation records, and did a mass change option. And again, I, I think this is a mass change option. I actually created it. I don't know if we have one out there. We may. I'm not sure if the SSCT has one out there. But the first thing that I want to do is, again, I want to make sure I filter my grid because I don't want to unflag anybody that has their current compensation records. I don't want to unflag those. I only want to unflag the ones from the prior fiscal year. So let's just say that I want to unflag anybody that has a label of 1718. So that's one of the reasons that we kind of tell people use the label field because eventually this would be really helpful for them as far as like getting that EMIS reportable field unchecked. Um, you could use the compensation start and stop date, you know, if you wanted to filter by that. Um, you feel that you want to filter, that's, that's the way to do it. Um, another thing I wanted to tell you too is it, for the reportable to EMIS um, field on a grid, you got to make sure it's very confusing on the more option we have a couple different reportable to EMIS fields. And I, I've made this mistake because I went in and instead of using the state reporting reportable to EMIS for my grid, I had used, uh, where is it at, this EMIS related information reportable to EMIS. And so I had that showing here instead of the state reporting EMI reportable to EMIS. So, what happened is when I went out and I tried to make changes, like I pulled in, you know, the employees that I wanted, I filtered my grid, and when I did that, I thought, oh, okay, the reportable to MIS flag, you know, they show, they do also true or false or whatever. So I'm going to filter again anybody that has true the reportable to MIS. But the problem that I found is. I had filtered, I'd done all that. I went in and did my mass change definition, and I, sub I submitted the mass change definition. Well, when I did it, the reportable to EMIS flag didn't get checked. It didn't change, it was still said true, and I'm like, what in the world? Well, then it occurred to me, finally, that I had the wrong field pulled up on the grid. So you just wanna make sure you have the right field pulled up on the grid when you're doing this. So, I have all of these records labeled 1718 reportable to EMIS true. So I'm going to change those all to false. So I'm going to go in again to the mass change definition. And I already have a definition out there. Uh, where is it? I think it's this one. Yeah. This reportable to EMIS false. Okay. I have it called EMIS false. So what I can do is once I pulled, loaded that definition, I pulled it in, I can see what it's going to do down here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the execution mode. You can see I'm going to change 186 records, compensation records. So if I click the submit mass change, what should happen is it will pop up these info errors just telling you if there's changes. And then now it's telling me there aren't any compensations to be modified. It's because all of those got changed from true to false. So if I go back in here, and if I type in false, oops, let me get at, let me close the definition. Oh, <laughs> maybe if I go to the right field, let's try that. You can see now all of those 1718 record, the label records 
now show the false in the reportable to EMIS field. So again, you can kind of see how this could be dangerous <laughs> because um, districts could definitely, you know, go in and do things that they shouldn't do, and that would, you know, that would be a problem. Let me go back in here and pull the chat box. So I, there we go. I'm going to pull this chat box over here so I could see it, and it's in front of me in case somebody says something. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? Lori, I do. Okay, um, sure. Yes. One, I appreciate the mass change being created for the clear EMIS fields. Thank you guys very much for putting that on the position. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible since this one works so well that this could also be a standardized one put in? Um, this one, the one that you created, this EMIS one, uh, yeah, to change the true to false? Yeah, I'm going to ask Mark about that because there, there's a couple other ones that we're going to see today that I'm thinking those would probably be really beneficial to, sure, to have. The, and yeah, the one that I'm talking about is the incrementing years of experience. So we're going to see, see that in a little bit. But okay, I will, okay. uh, EMIS one, I will ask Mark about, you know, if we can just put those out there because I can't feature that it would be that difficult to do. Okay. You know, I mean, to set it as a as a as a, a definition that's already setting out there. So and I will add that. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Lori. One other thanks. question: Is there a place that's going to be like um, the, a repository for these mass changes? And the only reason I ask is one, just so us as ITCs don't have to recreate the wheel, but. We've already created one, like at Meta. We have we use Teams and Office 365 as mm -hmm. we create them. We've got one for like if districts didn't rates, for example, on the 400s mm -hmm. and 450s, mm -hmm. we've got that created, and yeah. and so that our team can use it. So I just didn't know if that was something that could be blocked off just for ITCs to get to. Um, just yeah. throwing that out there as a suggestion. I totally agree, and I, I had asked about that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit that with, with Matt because it would be so helpful for ITCs to have that out there available to them. Michelle, are you still on? I mean, yeah, I was just, just going to comment on that. I know that we created um, a shared implementation page for the ITCs. I don't think a lot of ITCs have been um, um, implementing um, information in there, but I, but it's all restricted just to ITC staff. So I'm wondering if that's a good spot for us to put those in, because I too, I'm, I'd like to talk to um, Matt and just, you know, find out about where he would really want this information, whether it's a, a USAS mass change or a payroll, where he would like these um, documented if, you know, instead of being in the user manual, can we kind of put it in this more secure spot under that shared implementation page. So um, I am going to be sending out a message um, to all you guys next week, just a touch base email about the Friday webinars and about how to create tickets and just stuff like that. And so I'm going to find out about this and I'm going to add that to my email and, and uh, discuss further where these mass change uh, definitions are going to be stored. Thanks, Heidi. That was a good question. Well, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and that's, like I said, I think that would be really helpful for, for, especially for ITC people. You know, yeah, like you said, Heidi, we created one. Let's throw it out there so if somebody else wants to use it, it's out there just to pull in. So I think it would be really, really helpful for that, for that purpose. Um, okay, so another thing that we're going to talk about is the compensation paper period override field. And a lot of districts are wanting to use this because they want their paper period to be the same every single pay. And the way the system is set up right now, it does a calculation. So it could, you know, maybe this pay is, you know, three thousand and one dollar. Well, it does this calculation on before the next pay when you're getting ready to process it, and then it's three thousand dollars even. So they're, the district is finding that they were finding like their, their pennies off here and there. So there's this override paper period field flag that you can use for paper period or for unit amount, either one. And so we have a mass change definition or a mass change definition that can be used to flag that paper period override flag. Now, we've had a couple of reports of some issues with it here and there, and we're I think we're kind of looking into that because um, 
I know, I think, Heidi, did you say you had a, a district or something, something that had that happen to, like you flagged it, but it still didn't pull in like the paper period that was showing on the compensation record? Yeah, we had we had random ones. It wasn't a large group yeah. like we talked about the other day, but we had random yeah. ones and finally just could not, whether we took the amount out, saved it, put the amount back in, like all kinds of different ways to do it. We just ended up giving up and we created a new compensation record mm -hmm. and just did the differences and pays and, you know, so they're yeah. just going to have to take the two compensations added together, you know, to prove that the employee was paid out for the year. But yeah, we, and it was random. It was yeah. uh, three and different I think, districts, one single employee each district. They came yeah. over as contract records from Legacy, but we could not get them to, to do what we needed them to do. Yeah, and I think the other one that I was talking about, they were they were having issues because they had um, pulled in some uh, new contracts. I don't know if it was mid-year or just new contracts all the way. And there was it wasn't everybody, but it was like just you know I mean randomly certain people they were just their paper period was not working correctly. But um, we are going we're going to look at that. We had talked about that the other day at the uh, prioritization meeting. So we are going to look at that. But I will show you that mass change definition so you can, you know, use that if you need to, if your districts want that, you know, paper period to remain always the same so that their um, pay group totals when they initialize the payroll are always matching. So again, that's going to be found under the compensation record. So I could go to this mass change feature and I already have a, a, pay, a new, whoops, hold on, that's not the one. Where is it at? I might have to import it. Hold on here. <laughs> That's new contract. I don't want to use that. All right, so let's go back to the maintenance mode. And I can download a definition. Let's see, here we go. This compensation paper period override. I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna pull, oh, it's already in there, it says. Okay, so, oh, you know what, it's called this. Sorry, all right, I, it was right, it was this, but it's got a weird, different name. All right, so what I can do is, again, if I wanna just filter for only certain people, so maybe I want just, oh, let's see. Maybe we'll just do these. I don't know if I have any contract, let's look. I have any contract records in here. Oh, I have one. <laughs> Ooh, okay, we'll look at Kathy Smith here. And we'll, let's look at the paper period on Kathy and we'll see what it's, if it's marked or not. Paper period, it is not. The override flag is not set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and use that mass change definition to change that and flag that paper period field. Oh, hold on here, something happened, I just got kicked out. I think there's something that doesn't want this session to take place today. I don't know what it is, but something's wrong. Hold on, go back. Okay. All right, so let's go back to compensation and we'll pull Kathy Smith back up. Um, I think it was this record, assuming it was. Oh, no, it was this one, <laughs> because I pulled contract. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and go to the mass change definition, find that paper period override flag definition. I'm going to click on the execution mode. And so now it's going to change that flag to true. So I'm changing one compensation record. Uh, darn it. You know what, this is not right. I know what it is. Hold on, I, I think I have to go to the contract compensation record. That, that definition was wrong. It, that was for new contracts, that's what I thought. Here it is. Okay, 
Let's go back in. Let's pull up Kathy Smith again. Pull up her contract record. And then we'll do math change. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull in this override paper period calculation. So this is going to mark that paper period as true. So I'm going to ex do the execution mode, click submit math change. All right, now if I close the mass change option, if I look at Kathy Smith now, I should see the paper period overwrite flag is marked. That's true. So you can see, like, you have to be careful, like, where you load your definitions, especially like compensations. There's three different tabs. So you can see what I just did. I actually was in the, the, uh, all compensations record initially. Well, I, when I loaded that definition for that override, I didn't load it into all compensations. I had put it under contract compensation. So you have to be remember, or you have to be cautious. You know where you where you put those definitions, where you load those definitions. Um, any questions on the like the, the override paper period mass change definition? Okay, um, another option that we have is in new contracts. So when new contract season or that time is, is, is here, or if you're doing mid-year contract changes, if you go in to new contracts, you actually can override that paper period flag right in new contracts. So you could do that before you even activate the contracts in. So in order to do yeah, I have that override paper period calculation field already pulled in on my grid. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at this person right here, this Clifford Rosales. And I can see that that override paper period calculation in new contract for currently is not marked. So again, I had created a definition for new contracts that, that I can actually pull in to mass load or mass change, I should say not mass load, mass change those paper period flags. So if I wanted all of these new contracts, paper period override flags to be marked as true, I would leave my grid just like it is. Again, if I don't want to, if I only want to filter certain employees, I got to make sure I do that before I make my mass change. So now I'm going to go ahead and click this mass change option again. It, you have to find your definition. Mm -hmm. So we have the new contract paper period mass change option. And this shows us the definitions, the new compensation paper period manual calculation mode is going to be true. So that means it's going to flag it. And then new compensation paper period equals the new compensation calculated paper period. So I have my definition up here is defined. I can go ahead and do the execution mode. Again, it's telling me how many objects are going to get changed, and I can submit that change. It told me, you can see that pop up, it says six new contracts were, were changed or were modified. And it's going to tell me that when it does it. You, the only thing about it is it's quite quick. So when it does it, it just tells you, hey, six records were changed, so you know. So again, if I close out of this mass change feature, I should be able to go in now and see that Clifford Rosales his override paper period calculation is marked as true. And actually, all of these records are marked true. You can see it on the grid, it, the override paper period was changed from false to true. There's also a feature or another override or mass change feature that I have out there, it's, it's called label. So this would be really helpful, like at the beginning of every new contract or beginning of every school year when you're doing new contracts because if you are going to be a district or you have a district that, wa that is using the labels, like for grid sorting, like we did earlier um, when we were doing the, uh, the paper period or the MIS reportable flag, we use that 1718. I could go in here right now on the new contracts and I could actually change the label. So I think I do. I have the label on my grid right now. So I could change that label. Right now the label is testing. So if 
again, maybe you have all your records in there for, next, for the new school year. You have everything sitting out there. And maybe you only want to, you're only in charge of like all of the, um, the classified employees. So you could go in and you could filter your grid by, you know, the classified appointment type or whatever you want. Or if you have a label that you're wanting to make changes to, like right now I have testing pulled up. Or if there's just only a certain label you want to change, you could filter on that label. So I'm going to go ahead and use the mass change feature because I want to change my label. I want it to say um, 1920 because these are going to be the new contracts for 1920. So I could go in to, the, again, mass change. I have to go to the maintenance mode and I'm going to find my new compensation definition, which is my to change my labels. So and I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this definition. Right now I have a set to testing, but I want it to say 1920. Oops, 19, not 10, 19. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I need to make sure that I click the save option because now I've saved, saved this definition over into this new compensation label option. So I've got it pulled up, I've got it saved. I want to go in now and execute this. I want to go ahead and change this. And you can see it's very light, but you can see that the new value is going to be 1920. So if I go ahead and cl click the submit mass change, told me that six objects were changed. If I close this, I can see all of those records that I had sitting on the grid changed to 1920. Hey, Lori, I have a question, if I sure. may. Sure. So, because that maintenance mode is an admin privilege that I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not willing to give that to a district because of yeah. the great power that that has. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so that means at this point that piece would need to be updated by us all the time as ITC, and not that I'm trying to push off work, but I love enabling our users to be able to just do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Is there a way, and I, I know we have a couple of them, but I seem to trip over every time I do a script, too, that when they see that in execution mode, it be an empty or a blank field that they can fill in the value themselves. You mean like when they're in execution mode? Yes, so when they're in execution mode, like we have a couple of them like that we created to where like they change their insurance rates mm -hmm. yearly. So mm -hmm. um, in payroll items, we have one for the annuity type and also for the regular type for the board share that we, we figured out a way to, but I'm telling you, I trip over it every time, that, that it comes up with an empty box for them when it's in execution mode. So we have pointed it to the property, but the value is able to be entered by the district. So if you had this, this example that you're using for label in execution mode, Mm -hmm. They would see a box just to the left of submit mass change, and they could put in their own value. That way, are you I using, think, are you using the, the advanced? Or is that what you're using? I think it's advanced and yeah. normal mode, but yeah. But I mean, to me, let's let's give our users let's you know the option to sure. to make all those without us having to create. Because I'm with you and mass change. If if any mm -hmm. ITC hasn't done that yet. You do have to be very intentional where you yes. import that script or definition into. Mm -hmm. And um, once you learn that, then it becomes a whole lot easier um, to do. But, you know, if you're loading a whole bunch of them in, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I want to create a label for a mm -hmm. lot of districts. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And then based on what they're telling me they want, maybe they want one pay group to read one way, but another pay group label to read another way. Well, then that gets nightmarish. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Under, understood. So yeah, you're. That's a that's a good that's a good point. Just to to let them actually go in and enter in the value that they want. That would be yeah. a good idea. Yes. Totally agree. Yeah. So basically, let's see. So Heidi, you, you, don't, don't, you don't. Yeah, you don't have to do it now. But if I and I know there's different ways to format to whether it's a numeric value, a percentage mm -hmm. value, or an alpha value. And it's yeah. just getting my head wrapped around how, how that has to be scripted. 
Gotcha. Yeah. And I wish that I, you're, I'm the same way. And um, I, I, I kind of wish that we had like a little guide, you know what I mean? <laughs> Something that would help us. And I'm, I'm sure if we asked the programmers right now, they would be like, are you crazy? We, yeah, right. we have so many things to do. But normally we're just basically asking them, you know, what, what do we do? What do we do? So, um, but yeah, that's a good point. That is a very good point. Um, let me, let me write, my, write a little note here. Well, I'll be willing to share like the ones yeah. that we have that have the open ones back with you, Lori, so you guys can house them there if anybody asks. But I, that's my hiccup on that. And I just yeah. had one other little thing in the for the good of the cause realm. Mm -hmm. Because this doesn't have like a projection mode, yeah. um, what we've recommended our district started doing is we've kind of given them steps to do this is come in, filter your grid, then we have them run a report. Yes. whether it be PDF or Excel before they do the mass change and then they do one after. So they have a before screenshot and after. So if they ever need to undo, they know exactly who they touched. Yeah, exactly. And and I was going to talk about that because oh, definitely. Sorry. No, 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 you're fine. I mean, we might as well bring it up now. But that, I mean, because the audit report right now is not real user friendly, that's your best bet is to, like you said, get, your, get the, the, the grid pulled up that you want a report, then you can do your mass change, run a report afterwards. Because like you said, if for some reason they made a change to something that they didn't want to or people they didn't want to, it's already on the report that they actually processed before they made the change. So again, they'd have to go in and make those changes, but at least you have the initial data that was on there before they started. So, so yes, <laughs> that very, very good, very, very good to, to tell districts that. For um, another thing I wanted to talk about, and this is something that I know is for EMIS reporting, is the mass change, or not mass change, the increment experience years. And right now, currently, we don't have anything out there for that. Now, unfortunately, I mean, after, if your district has already been in the redesign for at least, my guess is they probably already have data in the experience. So. That's really good because we do. I there's a mass change definition that they can use for that for that fact. So what they can do is go into employees, and the thing about it is, when you import the data, obviously pretty much everybody should have experience already in, except for your new employees. So this mass change definition I'm going to show you for incrementing years of experience. Um, will work if there's already data in the field. So like the two main ones for EMIS reporting we use are the uh, total years of experience and authorized years of experience. So the mass change definition we have out there, I have created, is for those two options. Now, if you wanted to, like if you want this and you, you could elaborate on it, you know, if your districts use more other ones like district uh, years of experience, you could take what I have and expand on it and add more of your uh, whatever the district wants. But one thing to keep in mind is, let's just say that you have an employee that is new, they were new last year, okay? So in reality, now they have one year of experience. That is going to have to be either manually entered or mass loaded in using the mass load feature because this mass change definition that we're using only works on data that already has a, has something defined. So like they have total years of experience, they have authorized years of experience already defined, and it increments it by one. But unfortunately for anyone that has a blank, it will not work. So that has to be manually added or like I said, mass loaded in. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this increment experience mass change definition that I have out there. Um, I, again, I'm in the employee record, and let's see, we got I pulled up the authorized and total years of experience fields on my grid, just so you can see them. So we'll take a look here. I'm going to leave everybody on here, because we basically want to increment everybody that I have right now. And you'll see like this Rita Greer, she doesn't have any experience years. There's several that don't. 
And you'll notice after we run the mass change definition, they aren't going to get loaded. And more likely, what's going to happen when I try to load it, I'm probably to get an error because I'm going to have to filter out those individual employees that don't have any experience because if I don't, I'm going to get a, a null error and I'll show you what happens. So I'll just go into mass change and I can pull up, I have experience and you can see here's my definition. I'm going to actually increment, increment one year of, of total years experience and one year of authorized experience. So I'm going to go ahead and click the execution option. And when I click submit mass change, I'm expecting to get a red box at the top because I have several that are null that don't have anything in there. And I did. I knew that was going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to filter this for anybody, anybody that has greater than uh, let's do zero. Ah, let's hold on. What happened there? Greater than zero. I think that should pull in. Try that. Yeah. Okay. So everybody that has years of experience is showing up now. That's a good thing. So now if I go back to this mass change option and do the execution and do the su submit mass change. Ah, it still didn't work. So somebody, a blank, principal years. Oh, I didn't, I didn't create that. I probably should have the principal years of experience. Oh, we got total and authorized. Let's try to think and see if I have anybody that has a zero. No. Just try to see if I have somebody that has null. I don't. I don't know why it's doing that. Well, this blew my theory. It just <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get, get it's gonna be anybody that's null. Um, let's just pull in anybody that's greater or let's just do anybody that has two years of experience for right now. I'll just do that. And let's just see if I can get it to work. It worked for me yesterday when I did it. There we go. That works. All right, so somebody in that group had something wrong with it. So if I go back in, now you can see, I know Luke Miller was one of them that had two years of experience. Now he has three authorized, four total. So again, you can use this increment experience mass change option to update all those um, those fields with one quick, swift movement. Again, if you want to, you still can use the mass load option because that's what we initially had told people that they can use. But we do have this mass uh, increment option that you can use now. And again, one thing I did not include was the principal ex years of experience. I probably should do that. But in reality, I probably won't because usually districts don't have that many principals. It, and if you were going to do it, you're going to have to filter just on the principal experience because you don't want any nulls in there. So you probably have two or three or four or six that you're going to be mass changing. You can do it and you could add that uh, principal experience to the mass change increment definition, but it might be more monotonous to do it that way than just going manually and do it. So just an FYI. Um, something else that you can do a mass change def definition with would be your payroll items, which you can do employer rates, employee rates, employer and employee rates. So that's something that would be really beneficial. And like Heidi said, they had created one for the retirement for STRS and SERS rates. So um, you could definitely do that. Uh, it takes a minute for the payroll items to pull up. Um, another thing you could do in a, a mass change to would be the max amount, employer amount, employee amount, max amount. And again, this falls into that same category like this years of experience. If there's nothing currently in those fields, this, this mass change definition will not work. But if you 
have data in there, it will work. If, it, if you don't have anything in there, again, you're probably going to want to use a mass load spreadsheet and import that data in. All right, so let's just say the annuity items, I'm going to go in and um, I'm going to change your rate for, let's just say, the 564 record. And maybe I'm changing it only for the people that have $50 at the, as the employee rate. So great, one person pulled up. So I'm, I'm going to be changing the employer and employee rates so I can go to mass change and on my mass change definition, I have all these features. I have an employee rate, I have an employer employee rate, employer rate. So I'm going to change both rates. I'm going to make both rates, I'm going to change them both. I'm going to change the employee rate to 60, the employers to, let's do 300. 300. I'm going to save that. Now if I go in and execute it, I should be able to change the rates for the employee as well as the employer. So it tells me one item changed, and it did. It changed the rate from 50 to 60, and the employer rate, it was 200, now it's 300. So again, these are numbers, especially like classic used to have that option where they could just go in and do like a, it was pretty much like a mass change. Oh, somebody, I heard some music. That was really, really nice. <laughs> um, so we had that that option in Classic. Now they have the, the same option here. But again, if they wanted to use a mass load spreadsheet instead, they could just go to Utilities and use the mass load feature. And then mass load into, you know, the annuity item, a regular item, wherever they're going to be making the change. And then, again, one more feature I'll show you is that uh, the max fields. We'll go back to payroll items. And let's pull up, let's take a look here. Let's just do anybody that has a max amount of 850 right now or higher. Well, we got one with a null. So let's just do let's just do the 850. Oops, I don't want that. I'll do an equal grade 50, 850. So again, we're going to mass change this. We're going to make a change to the max amount. And then we want to make sure that it says a specific date, and then we'll have this specific date note, noted on the mass, def, mass change definition. So if I go in and find that, and I don't have it, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import that definition. So let me find it here, max amount. So here is my mass change for max amount. So I, again, I'm just, I'm going to do employer and employee both. If I only wanted to do employee, I could. So I'm going to change these. I'm going to change these features, make this 950. We'll make the boards 2000. I'm going to save it. I'm going to execute it for this one employee. I'm going to make that change. So it told me that one item was changed. So if I go back in, and I think it was, uh, yeah, it's right here, 950. It's this employee right here. So you can see that the amount was changed, a specific date field was entered in, was created. Oh, let me go back to that definition because I didn't look at the dates. I wanted to see what dates I had in there. Uh, let's look. 10 1. And probably have the same thing here. Yeah, 10 1. So I should be able to go in and see the specific date on this record as well. Pull it over here. Uh, there it is. Specific dates. 10 1 and 10 1. And those are the things that I had in my mass change definition. So all of that data got loaded to the record. So those are the features that are available. Um, those are just some of the mass change definitions that I have created. And again, I think it's a really good idea, like Heidi said, if we could have some sort of a place where all of like the ITCs could go and actually find these mass change definitions and be able to import them and use them or download them and use them. Um, 
Are there any questions about mass change? Um, I, I, have to, I just have um, uh, just something to say. Um, regarding that, well, I was talking earlier about that share training and implementation page. I'm adding that to the chat. If you guys have um, mass change definitions that you want to share, uh, you know, with the other ITCs, um, you can put those out there on the mass change. Um, we have um, a shared documents link where you can go in and upload anything, whether it's a report definition, um, whether it's a mass change definition, you can go in there and upload those and share them with the other ITCs. So let me get the chat window open here and I'll go ahead and give you guys that link. Um, you all should have access to this. Um, we made sure that ITC staff were able to upload things. People outside of IT staff can't, but you guys should be able to upload any report definitions, mass change definitions, or anything like that. So I'll put that out here in chat before we end the session. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you know, um, uh, let me know. Send me an email. Very good. Okay, anything else that we want to talk about or questions we have? And again, I apologize immensely for the technical problems we had earlier. I uh, appreciate everybody hanging in there. And if there's nothing else, uh, everybody have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.